Hey guys, hope you're all doing well. Now for today's video, I wanted to talk about some new information that has recently come out for Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous. Season 2 of the animated series is supposed to get a lot bigger, and today, I wanted to go over some of the interesting new plot details Netflix has teased that could end up being a pretty big deal. <laughs> So just in case any of you missed it, when the second trailer for Season 2 came out, it was actually incomplete and just the edited down version for YouTube. However, on the actual Netflix website, we could see a few exclusive clips that actually shows us a lot more of what's happening within the new story. Probably the most important bit happened to be the reveal of two stegosaurs that had seemingly been captured on the island and were actually being held in large steel cages. This same shot showed us one of the Baryonyx running after Brooklyn and Darius while the two desperately tried to escape. Now, the reason this stegosaur reveal is so interesting for fans is because, of course, when you actually factor in the known timeline of events that play out in Camp Cretaceous as they relate to the movies, none of us were really aware of anyone recapturing any of the dinosaurs after the events of Jurassic World and yet still before Fallen Kingdom. Of course, in the previous season, the looming threat of Manticore was present, and since they happen to be a rival genetics company to Simon Mizrani's engine, I think we very well could be seeing a little illegal expedition to the island in order to capture some dinosaurs for their own financial gain. If they they actually are successful in taking dinosaurs off of that island, it will mean that Eli Mills' animal trafficking from the last movie was not the first time that dinosaurs had been picked from Isla Nublar, and that they were pushed out into the open world far earlier than what we originally had thought. Now, personally, I'm not so sure this genetics company is going to be able to succeed in really anything they do in Season 2. However, I do think that there's a good chance that they could be causing a lot of trouble for Darius, Brooklyn, Sammy, Yaz, and everyone else's desperate survival. With that being said, there are also a lot of other things surrounding this trailer that seem to be giving people a lot to think about. For one, Owen Grady's motorcycle appears to have been found by Kinji, and the kids actually use it during a few scenes where they seem to all try to outrun either a Tyrannosaurus or possibly some other carnivorous animals in Jurassic World. A lone Ceratosaurus seems to be taking a drink next to many herbivorous species that we can see in this picture, and some fans of even been speculating on whether or not the dinosaur that we see in front of Kenji and Darius happens to be blind. Now, the reason some people think this could be a viable theory is due to the fact that when the dinosaur actually stares at them, it's literally just a few feet away and it doesn't seem to be acting in an overtly predatory manner, which is also contradictory to the behavior that we see take place later on in the same trailer with a red individual. If you take a look at the pupils of this gray ceratosaurus, I will admit it does look like the animal could indeed be blind or at least have a very hard time seeing what's in front of him. I say this because the animators seem to have given it this very yellow and dull look that could insinuate that it's unable to see. This is Jurassic World after all, and since it's basically a giant dinosaur zoo, any animal that would have such a deformity would more than likely be taken care of quite well, at least when the park was operational anyways. Of course, this could also just be a weird looking frame and the dinosaur may not be blind at all and instead just waiting to go in for the attack or pull off one of those goofy poopy sniffs that we saw in Jurassic Park 3. Either way, it's a fun aspect to think about in the build-up to Season 2. Now, of course, the most important aspect of this video will have to be the recent Season 2 description that Netflix themselves have shown off on their website. And since some of you may think that this could very well involve a spoiler, I don't want to dive into it until I let you guys know ahead of time. So, if you don't want to know literally anything out side of what you see in the actual trailers, I'd suggest now would be a good time to click off of the video. You have been warned. So recently, Netflix updated their season two description with the following. With no hope of rescue for the stranded campers, the arrival of a small group of eco-tourists could spell salvation, but things aren't what they seem. So when I initially read that description for this new season for Camp Cretaceous, my brain actually thought of eco terrorists instead of eco-tourists, which of course snapped me back to thinking of Nick Van Owen from The Lost World. But of course, once you go over the word carefully, which I totally did not do, the context for everything changes drastically. Now, I'm going to go ahead and make a prediction here for what I think this could mean for season two. Personally, 
I think that the arrival of these eco-tourists who are, quote, not what they seem, is actually going to be either Manticore or some other genetics company who are showing up to steal the dinosaurs. They might try and dupe the kids into believing that they're there for other purposes, but in the end, I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing some pretty shady stuff go down in season two. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it. What do all of you think about this information? What are your thoughts and opinions on everything that we currently know about season two so far? I almost thought Nick Van Owen might be showing up, but then again, even in the context of it saying eco-terrorists, I might be way too much of a Lost World fan. Anyways, guys, whatever your thoughts and opinions happen to be, I'd love to hear them in the comments down below. Now before I go, I'd like to thank all of my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Guys, it seriously means the world to me that all of you continue to support what I do, and I never want you to ever forget that. Now, I'd like to thank all of you for watching today's video, and hope you all enjoyed the content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll all consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys, and as always, take it easy.